Hi everyone, let us talk about limiting reactant. This is also known as limiting reagent. Let us consider first this situation where we prepare grilled cheese sandwich. So it involves two bread slices, one cheese slice to make one sandwich. Now, if there are 100 bread slices and 30 cheese slices, how many sandwiches can you prepare? What is the limiting factor in our ability to make the maximum amount of grilled cheese sandwiches containing two slices of bread and one slice of cheese? Ilang sandwiches ba? 50 or 30? The answer is 30 because we are limited to the amount of cheese slices we have. Now, limiting reactant. What is, it, what is the importance of the knowledge about limit, limiting reactant or limiting reagent? Calculations of limiting reactant bring quantitative understanding to chemical reactions. And these calculations are used in general, organic, and analytical chemistry. Let us consider first some definitions. Definition for limiting reactant. This is a reactant that is completely consumed in a chemical reaction. And this determines the amount of product form. Katulad ng grilled cheese sandwich natin kanina, ang limiting factor doon ay cheese. So, 30 slices lang ng cheese, kaya 30 slices lang ng, or rather, 30 sandwiches lang ang na-produce natin. It determines the amount of product form. Further definitions, theoretical yield. The amount of product that can be made based on the amount of limiting reactant. And the actual yield is what you obtain experimentally. So, actual ito. And the percent yield is actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. Earlier, earlier it was about sandwiches. Analogous situation occurs with chemical reactions. In this container, there are 15 units of H2, ito, kumbilangin natin, 15 yan, and 5 units of N2. The reaction proceeds according to the equation 3H2 plus N2 to form 2NH3. So, the proportion is 3 is to 1 is to 2. Since there are 15H2, kung bilangin natin, 15H2 and 5N2, how many NH3 do we produce? Okay, we produce 10 NH3. It's still... It's still uh, kanang follows the 3 is to 1 is to 2. So, it's 15 is to 5 is to 10. All the hydrogen and nitrogen atoms combined. Okay. Now, we consider another situation where this time there are 9 units of H2 and the same as the previous slide, 5 units of N2. Okay, kanina alam natin na all the, rea the reactants combined. Okay, this time, 9 na lang ang H2. 5 pa rin ang N2. 5 units of N2 and 9 units of H2. Okay. This time, there are leftover N2. Okay. Yung hindi nag-react. Leftover N2 or the unreacted N2. So, this is N2 is the excess reagent. 
kasi nagsobra siya eh, unreacted. And H2 is the limiting reagent. H2 determines the amount of product form. There are only 6 units of NH3 form. We consider another reaction involving 2H2-1O2 and 2H2O. The ratio is 2 is to 1 is to 2. If we have exactly 2 moles of H2 and 1 mole of O2, then we make 2 moles of water. But what if we have 4 moles of H2? Apat dito at isa lang dito. Ilan ang magagawa natin? We can only make 2 moles of H2O with 2 moles of H2 left over. In this case, O2 is the limiting reagent. The limiting reagent is the one with nothing left over. Walang masusobra doon sa limiting reagent. Yung ex yung the, the, other, uh, the other reagent, you call it the excess reagent, yung merong masusobra. We have to understand that multiplying an equation through by a common multiple. We can multiply all the coefficients in a balance equation by any multiple and it still has the correct ratio of moles. Okay, so if this is your original equation, 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1. If I multiply the whole thing by 2, so magiging 2, 4, 2, 2, correct ratio pa rin yon. Likewise, if I multiply it by 0.5, so magiging 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the same. It is still a correct ratio of moles. How to determine limiting reactant? Okay. First is um, you calculate the most needed of each reactant and compare with the most given. Or you can divide the most of each reactant by its stoichiometric coefficient and then compare them. And the third, calculate the most of product produced by each reactant and compare them. So th these are three ways of determining the limiting reactant. So, so example one, we consider the reaction H2 and N2 to give NH3. <clears throat> and assume we have three moles of N2 and six moles of H2. Okay, so three moles of N2 and six moles of H2. So, ating i-factor, ito yung method 1. Okay, most of N2 over most of N2 in the equation. Okay, so most of N2 given and most of N2 in the equation. So, yung given, ito yung given. Assume we have 3 moles of N2 over the mole of N2 in the equation. So, this will be uh, equal to 3. 3 over 1 is 3. Multiply all coefficients in balance equation by this factor. Okay, so, I multiply natin by 3, by 3. Okay, so 3 and 3, this will be 9. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6. Okay, try N2 as limiting reagent. Okay, 3 moles of N2 requires how many moles of H2? 3 times 3 is equal to 9. We only have 6 moles of H2. So, kulang siya than what is required. 
six moles lang yung given. So, H2 is the limiting reagent. <coughs> okay, ito naman sa procedure 2. Okay, divide the moles of each reactant by its stoichiometric coefficient. So, ito yung given uh, reaction. Ang, ang coefficient ay 2, 3, 1, 6. How much barium phosphate can be formed if we have in the solution 3.5 grams of sodium phosphate? So, grams ito ha. Uh, 6.4 grams of barium nitrate. Okay, i-convert muna natin yung grams to moles. So, 3.5 over molecular weight will give us 0 0.0213 mole of sodium phosphate. 6.4 grams of barium nitrate divided by molecular weight will give us 0 0.0245 mole of barium nitrate. Then, so ito na yung mole natin. Ito na yung mole natin. We divide that. Okay, so sodium nitrate, a uh, sodium phosphate rather, we divide it by its coefficient, 2. And sa barium nitrate, we divide this by its coefficient, 3. Okay, and then we compare. Alin na mas mababa? Ito, mas mababa sa dito. So this one is the limiting reagent. Sa, uh, sa method 3, calculate the amount of product produced by each reactant. Now we consider nitrogen and hydrogen again to form NH3. If you are given 3 mole at 6 moles, yung 3 moles of N2 will produce 6 moles of NH3 by this by this uh, relationship okay by this relationship and six moles of h2 will produce four moles of nh3 okay so the limiting reactant that produces the least amount of product is the limiting reagent so ibig sabihin ali ba mas mababa sa kanila eto so h2 is the limiting reagent. Okay, so suppose you're given zinc metal 2 grams plus a solution of silver nitrate 2.5 grams. Reacts according to this reaction. So it's 1 is to 2. Which is the limiting reagent? How much zinc will be left over. Uy, para namang para namang <laughs> binigay na yung answer. How much zinc daw will be left over? Okay, so 65 grams of zinc. Uh, uh, 65 grams per mole, that is the molecular weight of zinc. And for silver nitrate, it's 170 grams per mole. So 2 grams of zinc is equivalent to 0 0.0308 mole and 2.5 grams of silver nitrate is 0 0.0147 mole. So, guess the limiting reagent. In this case, it seems clear that silver nitrate must be the limiting reagent because the equation says we must have two moles of silver nitrate for each mole of zinc. But in fact, we have more moles of zinc. We can check this by dividing the moles of each reactant by their coefficients. So, sa coefficient nila, 0 0.0147 divided by the coefficient at dito. Okay? So, mas mababa, mas mababa ang silver nitrate. 0 0.0305 mole of zinc, which is more than 0 0.00. 735 mole of silver, silver nitrate. So, silver nitrate is clearly the limiting reagent. How much zinc is left over? 
Okay, 0.0147 mole of silver nitrate. Ito yung limiting reagent. We convert this to gram of zinc that will be formed. 0.4775 grams of zinc. We subtract it from the amount of zinc available. So 2, initially it was 2, minus the amount that is reacted by silver nitrate will be you will have 1.52 grams of zinc left over or excess. Okay, again, the theoretical yield. Okay, so this is now your uh, quiz assignment. 10.4 grams of barium hydroxide was reacted with an excess of sodium sulfate. Okay, to give a precipitate of barium sulfate, the reaction actually yielded 11.2 grams of barium sulfate. So you have to, you have to uh, use the uh, formula for theoretical yield. Okay, in, in the earlier, I, I was trying to go back to the earlier slide, pero ayona. Okay, so find the theoretical yield of barium sulfate and what is the percent yield of barium sulfate.